Okay, I'm back with my stamping of the alcoholic background. Now, what I wanted to do on this was um, use this opportunity to show you the reverse stamping technique. I know I said I was going to have a coming out of the darkness into the light, but I feel like, you know, from what's going on at the moment in the world, um, we're definitely going into a, a dark patch, but we just need someone to help light the way, you know, help see us through it. So I think I'm going to bring in some pan pastel elements of the yellow coming through just to sort of show that, you know, even if it looks um, dark, foreboding, there's going to be little patches of light, things that, little things that help us get through um, how the world's coming together, although, you know, we need to do more, um, but how the world is coming together at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to show you the reverse, reverse stamping techniques. At the moment, um, Freya's going to be going this way. But I actually want her, so she'd be like this, but I actually want her to be going this way. I just think it, it sits better and it, it kind of talks more about where we're at at the moment. So I'm going to, um, first job. Um, so we'll need a gel plate for this. Now, is Freya going to fit onto my small round one? She may, but I don't think she quite will. So you can just see coming up here a shot of what she would look like if she wasn't reversed. So she's facing to the left. And she was a bit patchy here, but that's just because I'm just sort of priming the stamp because it's a new stamp. And I've got quite an, an uneven surface, so it will be patchy. I'm going to be using my 6-inch round gel press plate because my 4-inch just wasn't quite the right size. Ink, ink her up in the twilight. I've decided to go for twilight. I hope I do not regret this decision, guys. <laughs> I'm going to show you in the twilight, but I'm not going to actually stamp it onto that one. I'm just going to... So basically, I'm, I've stamped, I've inked her up. I'm pressing it down onto my gel plate. Now, so you can see you've got that double sort of stamping, can't you? So what I do is I would get a um, cotton bud, but... Let's just try. Let's just try. I'll show you what this one looks like. I'm just going to do it on a piece of uh, another experimental piece that I was doing here. Yeah, have I just so I would press that down on the plate, press that down on the background, even pull it off, and we get that, which obviously you know looks very um, doesn't quite look right, does it? it? Looks like she's got a weird shadow. So, you know, it's, it does depend on your how you lay it down, because if you're a bit haphazard with it, you can get that sort of silhouette. So, I'm going to turn my plate over, and I'm going to give my stamp a clean. And I'm just going to press this on to here. Let's make sure we haven't got any... Uh, any extra residue because you can get it build up around the edge and then that's going to automatically cause you problems when you're doing this technique anyway okay so um let's try one more time. maybe that's telling me i should be doing the black you know what i mean it's a bit of a sign isn't it that's what i'm seeing it as i don't think my nocturne pad is quite as juicy either which might help so i am going to on there and obviously any areas that don't come out as well so I'm just going to like get that area there look because we've got extra black there that we don't need and I don't want to ruin this so okay so there we go I'm going to pop her down I'm going to just be really take your time with this lay her down Press gently. Press all those areas that you know might be a problem, like the the fairy wings and things like that. Yeah, just don't. You don't want to feel it moving around under your fingers. That's going to be a recipe for disaster. <clears throat> so I'm just doing this really lightly, and then I'm just going to take it off carefully. And that one is definitely better, isn't it? Okay, so you don't got that sort of smushy effect. 
the wings look good as well. So now what I'm going to do is basically decide where I'm going to pop it, which I think is about here. So we don't want to, we don't want to lose the fairy wings. So what I'm going to do then, so she's about here, the base. So I'm going to lay it about there. Okay, I'm just pressing it down. And just make sure you give it a bit of time to sink in. And we can pull that off. And yeah, it looks a bit patchy at the moment, but we can go in with, um, I just have a little brush. Now you could use a um, Stabilo All Pencil to colour in, um, if you're not going to use any water or anything on this. You could use a Posca pen. I just need to find my little brush. Okay, so I don't wet this brush, I just purely use it with my... Um, nocturne and what I do is I just get a good chunk of nocturne on my brush the important thing here is that the wings have come out okay so I don't need to worry about that and generally there's not really any really tricky areas that I haven't taken so I can just go in with this little brush and capture those little areas. Now, obviously, the more you practice this, I haven't done it for a while, so I'm kind of out of practice again. Um, but the more you practice that reverse technique, the easier it becomes. Um, and obviously, I've, I did a... Um, a reflection technique and I reversed my badger on that one so if you go back and look at some of my older tutorials I did the reflection technique um, which I love and also reversed the badger at the same time and that one came out really well so you know it's just a lot of it depends on that one I actually did with the brayer so I actually um, Re did the reflection technique with the brayer on that one it's quite an interesting one so it might be worth going and checking that out if you're interested in the reflection technique as well so so yeah just colouring her, her in I will whiz this on guys because you know there's only so much of this you can watch okay so I had a delivery to go get so I stopped and just finished it off camera hand looks a little bit um sort of blurry so I'll probably just tweak that with a um Either a jelly roll pen or a Posca pen at the end, maybe with a bit of highlighting. Not worried about that at all. So, next job is we need the lamp. So, I don't think I'm going to need to reverse the lamp. Because I can just have her holding it like that. So, I'm just going to have that hanging... I just have to be careful where we place this. Place it about there. Okay. A nice press. There we go. Now I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I did want to go uh, bring into this. I did want to bring some animals actually because obviously there's animals being displaced by war as well. And you know, they're out in the wilds, certain animals obviously. Um, and I just thought, you know, it's like, how is this going to be for them? You know, how are they going to be feeling? Um, a lot of the, a lot of people that are moving around are also, you know, taking their animals because if your life was just uprooted and your animal was your family, you're not going to want to leave it behind, are you? So this is the uh, hazel tree. Maybe we'll, uh, I've got that owl, Let's bring that owl in on the hazel tree possibly. Maybe we'll bring that owl in this side. So, you know, there's, yeah, I quite like that actually. Let's go for that. So, 
So if we have um, let's have a little bit coming in at the top here, maybe like this. Yeah, that's nice. So it's sort of blending in with that background already, isn't it? I don't want it to stand out too much because I don't want it to detract from the woman. And I think we'll have the owl in black as well, because obviously the owls are being affected too. Um, all the uh, animals and people, isn't it? So, sort of commenting on that, really. So we'll have the owl looking down. Maybe that here. First time I've used this one as well and I haven't stamped it off. So yeah, so we can get some colour in the eyes there, that's fine. I haven't got that there. So we can sort of think they're helping each other. She's guiding them too. Okay. And then, so I brought in a mask. Sorry. There we go. Ooh, made it worse. <laughs> and I'm just going to put my mask here and just... I'm just going to blend upwards for now. And I feel like obviously we need a bit of blue here. So what I might do is bring in my stenciling technique, which is to create a pathway basically through a stencil. So it looks like dappled light. And I've used that on quite a few of my um, alcoholic background pictures. Show you what I mean in a second. Yeah, so I kind of brought in another sort of subtle, subtle area there. And I think what I'll do is just sort of blend a little bit of that up here. Because, um, but I think I might go for a bit of the twilight as well. The medieval blue um, might be taking a little bit too much of that sort of blue effect away. So I'm going to go in with... Some muddy, some uh, twilight now back over the top of this. Yeah, that's kind of blending in more with the alcoholic background. So, you know, we had some of those white areas, I'm basically just taking some of those out a little bit more. Let's go back over these areas a little bit. So, that's yeah, that's definitely blending it in better. That's better. So basically, we should have done that in Medi in a Twilight, but it's fine. I'm just going to go back over it a little bit now. So it's almost like we've got a dual layer, a dual layer of stenciling, and obviously just try not to go too much above the, the sort of floor level that's on the base of her stamp. There we go. Look, it's better. So we've got some almost like dappled light areas there. That. And what I might do is just tie a bit more in around the top here as well. So this is what we've got at the moment then guys. 
I think what I might do is bring this blue around a little bit more here or actually no, I'm going to bring some of this stamping back in. Um, I think I'm going to keep this side a bit more clear of all that because it's like, you know, you're walking out from your cleaner life to uh, being thrown into this wartime situation, which is very much wild. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. So I can come in with a bit of yellow for the, moon, uh, for this, the sun or the moon. We could actually go over the owl as if they are, you know, in the distance. It's just basically a, another sort of light source, another source of hope. Okay, there we go. And then I'll bring in a bit of white. Also, I love the pan pastels, I think they're awesome. Bring in a bit of the white. I feel like I need maybe a bit more darker here, so I might just go over part of this with some of that blue, just to add a bit more. Depth. Yeah, so you just kind of got a, like a little bit of shadow coming down for her. There we go, that's a bit better. And what I always like to do as well is I like to bring a bit of colour around the edge just to sort of draw you in even more, like a darker colour. So I think what I will do is bring in, it's either going to be Nocturne or Twilight, I think let's bring in the Twilight again and go all the way around the edge. So this is going to be the last thing I show you, I will just kind of show you a picture of the end result when I've added a few more details to it, but I tend to just, um, you know, go around the edge just to bring it in a focal point. We may add a little bit of nocturne over this actually, because we've got quite a lot of twilight in the picture already. We could keep that area as a moon. Let me just see if I've got... Where's my mask from? Could have that area there as a moon. Maybe uh, let's go in with the... If I get the Yeah, I'm going to go in there with the twilight again for the mask. So what I will do is go in with my white and because I've already got some uh, blue underneath this should show through quite nicely now so we'll kind of just go over with that white. Just to sort of cover some of those areas and because they show through because they're the alcohol ink and the colours quite strong it uh, gives us that impression that it is the moon behind there lighting it up quite well Oh, 
Right. And what I will probably do is maybe re-stamp over that with some of the willow, the hazel. But you've got to be careful because you would lay pan pastel down. Can, uh, can sort of blur it a little bit. And I don't really want to catch the owl with this, so I'm just going to go in like that. I'll just have a little bit of a little bit of maybe rays on this one down. A bit of splodge there, I don't know where that's come from, so I'm just gonna see if I can it's frustrating when that happens, isn't it? Oh well, it's just one of those things. Must have been from when I did that stamp there. Oh well, it's fine. It's fine. It's just it's home. It's handmade. What can you do? Okay, there we go. So I think generally I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to do a little bit more detail on the stamping. I'm going to go in with a nocturne though, just to edge it a bit more. Just to really draw you in around the edge of the picture, especially on this side. Uh, like I say, I may just write something on there and, as well, which is not something I tend to do with my Lavinia Stamps pictures, but sometimes you just feel the urge, so... I'll see what I can find that I think, you know, resonates with what is going on at the moment. Don't want quite so much dark on this side. Okay, there we go. I think that's about, about where we need to be. Okay, so... Um, got the finished piece sent in the middle. I decided not to go with the um, the quote in the end because I felt the image sort of spoke for itself, really. Um, I thought it was very powerful and I didn't want to go in there and kind of get it to the point where I wasn't happy with it. So I've left it. I've left it pretty much as it was when I last spoke to you, apart from the fact that I've added a little Posca pen detail. I've gone in with a little bit of uh, Posca pen in the background as well just to cover. I don't know if you noticed towards the end the video I noticed I've got a big black smudge here I'd already tried to cut the one and then I got another one I was like oh my goodness where did that come from so I've just kind of gone over it with a white Posca pen and it just sort of, sort of blends into the background so that's that's worked so Posca pens are good to cover smudges or fingerprints and things if you need them um so yeah pretty much happy with this um and like I said I am with the very kind permission of Lavinia stamps trying to encourage a flurry of yellow and blue pictures um, to go up onto their Facebook page, Reach Out with Lavinia. That's the page that they suggested. I'll put the name of that below there. And if, so if you have been inspired by this tutorial or if it's given you an idea of how you can use your Lavinia stamps with yellow and blue in support of Ukraine, please do um, drop a comment and a picture of what you've made below. I'd love to see it. And also make sure you get it on that Facebook page because... Um, It'd be great to just show how much we're supporting um, those those poor people that are going through so much at the moment. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you really enjoyed this tutorial, please please do consider subscribing. We're just at about 700 subscribers now, so it's still a small channel, but we are growing, and I do really appreciate all of your support. Top left there is my profile picture. If you click that and the bell and all notifications, that will let you know whenever I've got a new video coming out. And bottom left there is a link to that tutorial I was talking about early on in the video, which was the um, 
the reflection tutorial but also I do a bit of reverse stamping in that one as well so um, I hope you want to go and check that one out and enjoy that one too so take care of yourselves guys be kind put a lot of love out in the world and please show your support by doing that blue and yellow for Ukraine okay keep crafting take care and I'll see you in the next one bye for now